Welcome back to the show. We're now joined by head track and field coach, Dr. Peter Ormsby. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. Coach, fans might not be aware of it, but despite the bitter cold temperatures, the track and field season is in full swing in the indoor portion of the, of the schedule. Besides the obvious, explain some of the differences between indoor and outdoor track and field and how it translates to the success of your team once you go back outdoors. The, the main difference is we go from a 400 meter track outdoors to a 200 meter flat track indoors. Um, so some of the events they have to do a little bit more math and run twice as many laps out indoors as outdoors, but it's a great it's a great opportunity for the kids to kind of get the butterflies out now so as we go into outdoor where it's a more championship season, uh, they'll be ready. Your teams have had a great deal of success so far this season in non-team scoring meets, including your last indoor meet at the UCS Invitational. Let's highlight some of the superlatives for your women first. Six women set new personal bests uh, in Winston-Salem, including a throw of 13.15 meters by Janelle Brown in the shot put on the way to a fourth place finish in that event. What has impressed you so far on the women's side and what are some of the things that will translate over to the outdoor season? A lot of it is just getting, getting marks down, getting, just getting, being competitive again. Uh, a lot of the sprinters, jumpers, and throwers really haven't done anything since probably last outdoor. So for them to be back on the track, back in the throwing sector is, is really huge. And uh, obviously the more they get to compete, the better we'll be down the road for PBCs. Your men's team grabbed nine top 10 finishes at the same meet, including three by Shaquille Ray alone. Let's throw that same question out there for the men's team. What have you been impressed with so far and who are some of the athletes that have stepped up and became leaders on your team? In essence, we're doing the same thing that the girls are doing. The, the more times we can get them on the track, the more times we can get them in heats, whether it's prelims, finals, semis, uh, the more we can get them going, the better. Uh, obviously, with a big recruiting class that they brought in last year to this year, there's a lot of kids that we need to get on the track and get marks. So it's really just a, a learning curve for them and myself. You were able to see some of the other Peach Belt Conference teams in Winston-Salem. So how do you feel your team stacks up against those other PBC teams in attendance at the event? A few of the schools have been racing a lot more than we have because uh, they, they sponsor indoor and, and we're just kind of in the, in the process of getting a couple meets in. Uh, I think we'll be okay. I know a few schools opened up down in Florida, Ember Riddle, uh, Nova and Florida Tech. So it really is just scouring the results, seeing what we're doing and obviously I think we'll be ready when it counts. Gianna Taylor has already made a name for herself as a freshman on your women's team. She broke a pair of school records uh, in a few events at her collegiate debut in early December and registered a pair of top 10 finishes at the UCS Invitationals. Who are some of the other standouts on the women's side and who are some of the athletes that may have not burst onto the scene quite yet but have potential to do so? We're, we're still learning. Uh, I know Leah uh, has, has put up some good time. So there's a few out of each discipline from middle distance to distance to sprints and jumps so we're still like I said we're still learning the groups and it once we get to outdoor I think the the group the breakout group will be even bigger down the road back to Shaquille Ray uh, he's been a force to reckon with on the men's team over the last few years but missed some of the season last year because of a nagging injury talk about his development so far and what impresses you most about him he's, he's a huge team player I know he's, he's got a nationals on his sights for outdoors, but he's still doing everything he can to get the younger kids going, especially getting ready for, for conference and, and just outdoors in general. So he's a huge team player and, and just a, a great guy to, to kind of be there for, for the younger ones. Let's talk a little bit about the field events on the men's side now. Corey Jones placed among the top 10 in both the high jump and the long jump while Dylan Perry placed among the top eight in both the weight throw and the shot put at the UCS Invitational. What is the potential of those two athletes and are they among the guys that you expect to score points at the PBC Championships? Definitely two huge point getters we hope. Um, we're going to lean on the, the sprints, jumps and probably the throws a little bit more going into PBCs. Obviously we've got a, a, a decent group of distance and middle distance guys to going forward, but uh, obviously they can compete in a few more events going into conference, whereas the distance guys, you know, one, two events depending. So definitely we're going to lean on them a little bit, but obviously with the depth of the distance, we'll, you know, round out what we need to do conference guys. Thanks coach so much for being on the show with us today. Thanks for having me. Thank you for watching this week's edition of the Black and Gold Report. Until next week, go Braves.